Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on small business owners who are getting the move on. And our guest this week, well, he impacts hundreds, well, thousands, tens of thousands of people and businesses through technical spraying. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome where we chat with real business owners who have real success and learn from them about what works, what doesn't, and who want you to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Join us where you can learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Nick Pollock, the owner of Technical Spray Services. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you. Happy to be here. And for visioners who don't know who you are, who are you and what is it that you do? My name is Nick Pala. I am the owner of Technical Spray Services and Full Throttle Ag. Uh, we do uh, weed control and we also do insecticide applications in orchards. Have you ever driven down the 99 freeway or the I-5 and you're going through the or, or driving past the orchards, I should say, and you see this tractor that's pulling this trailer of stuff that's just spewing stuff everywhere? Well, that's what Nick does. Yep. <laughs> and explain to Vision Your Nation why what you do is so important to the ag industry. For the ag industry, it's crop protection. Okay. So we're out there trying to protect those nuts, you know, those almonds and the pistachios. Right. And sure. Make sure that you know they're strong and healthy. You know we apply fertilizers and insecticides, and so. And, we, and you also do weed abatement. Yes, I do. Why is that also important to the ag industry? So the weed abatement uh -huh. in the ag industry that we do in the orchards is basically for you know crop protection also. Okay. And it's uh, it eliminates the competition for water because ah. the weeds absorb the water and take it away from the tree. There, okay. And also, you know, it helps, you know, during the harvest, we want to make sure that we have a nice, clean orchard floor. Mm. So especially for almonds, when we're picking them up, you know, they're not getting caught in the weeds and, right. we, and the farmer's losing yield. Right, right, right sure. So. Why is what you do so important for the oil industry and for the solar industry? Well, it comes down to fire prevention. Okay. So when we're out there, I mean, when the weeds grow, you mm. know, they dry right. and they become, you know, basically a fire hazard. Oh, okay. Right. And so we need to make sure they don't grow so we'll basically, you know, cut them off at the root and eliminate the problem. So. Ah, there it is. Okay. Visioneers, if you occasionally hear a vehicle driving by or you, you hear other sounds of tractors and lawnmowers and other stuff, it's because Nick has a very unusual setting here. He <laughs> has his shop, his warehouse in his backyard. Literally, I, I kid you not, we are standing with his, his sprayers and his tractors and whatnot, and within a stone's throw distance, I could hit a swimming pool. <laughs> it's great! <laughs> why, why do you have everything consolidated into one spot? Well, it's, uh, it wasn't designed that way <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to sure. start, you know, because uh, when I first started, you know, we were farming out in Shafter, you know, right. I had my, you know, the first piece of equipment I bought, I kept out there on the, you know, on the yard that we had. Right. And then over time, you know, as things change, as they do, you know, right. Uh, that property got sold, and so I had to find a spot for my equipment. Right. So I started renting a shop. Right. And I quickly realized that shop rent is ridiculously expensive. <laughs> right, right, right. And I was like, what am I doing? I mean, I can, you know, purchase the place for the price of, you know, for basically the cash that I'm spending on rent and my mortgage. You know, right. I can buy another place and keep all my stuff on site, not reduce the risk of theft. And right. You know, and just have peace of mind that, you know, I can look in the back and everything's right there. Yeah. And you also so. don't have to come to the shop and wonder if somebody had a set of bolt cutters over the weekend. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was my biggest fear. <laughs> Rolling up on a Monday morning and seeing a big hole in the fence. You there know. you go. Now, getting back to what it is that you do, you mentioned that, what was the, what was the first business that you had? So it's called Full Throttle Ag. Okay, Full Throttle Ag. And you grew and expanded and you bought Technical Spray Services. That's correct, yeah. Now, from whom did you buy it? So I bought it from a gentleman named Tony Shackelford. Okay. Who, uh, who was the owner of Technical Spray at the time. And why did you buy his business? So the main reason I bought it was because, uh, you know, ag is very, you know, seasonal uh, employee-wise. Right. And I knew I could not expand the ag side, mm. the small section that I was doing, right. and keep a good set of employees year round. Ah. I was looking at probably like a good five to six months worth of work at the time. Right. 
and so I had to, you know, figure out a way to have full-time employees. Did so. technical spray services allow you to diversify your clientele? Yeah, it did. Okay, how so? So uh, technical spray is when I started uh, getting into the industrial spray. Mm. So. And you've also grown into a DOD, Department of Defense. I have managed to land a contract, yes. Right, right, so. right. Because that has also helped you with your seasonal employees, has it not? Yes, it has. And the reason I bring that up, Visioneers, is because in the next segment, we're going to be talking more about how do you come up with a training system for seasonal employees and have it set up so that you're not reinventing the wheel every single time. But one of the things I wanted to touch on before we close out this segment is you don't do residential properties, correct? That's correct. Yeah, I stick with, you know, industrial, commercial, and agriculture. So. Why do you not do residential? It's just not in my comfort zone. Honestly. Okay, so, sure, right. right. You know, I grew up on a farm. I'm used to the large scale production and agriculture. And you have to deal with less, fewer people. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, if visioneers want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, uh, my website is uh, tssweedcontrol.com. My phone number is 661 747 6180. And if you enjoy Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about that seasonal employee training without driving you crazy. When we come right back. The winter season is rapidly approaching, but are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? Bakersfield's best tire store, Clareau Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Clareau Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at ClareauTire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 today. I'm here with Nick Paula, the owner of Technical Spray Services, and our vision your question comes from Jerry who asks, we are adding employees to our business for the first time. We know that there's going to be a certain amount of seasonal turnover with them. What are you doing to set up training for the new employees so you don't forget anything important? <laughs> yeah, training. So Right. <laughs> There's definitely a lot to forget. I right, mean, you know, sure. I've had to start writing stuff down because you know I tried. I first started just trying to remember everything. And oh no, that doesn't. No, work. it doesn't. No. Work <laughs> so, and I started thinking, okay, what you know, if I were applying for this job, you know, what would I, you know, want to know? Right. You know, right. Basically, and so I mean, I started asking, you know, simple questions that obtain to like my line of work. Like, right. do you know how to drive with a clutch? Right. Can sure. you drive a manual transmission? Can you back up? A trailer with a truck right know, right just silly stuff like that uh and then as far as like getting more into like the actual like work right you know uh thankfully you know the the state and the local government you know set out guidelines that we have to follow for you know pest av applications and there are certain training topics that we have to touch on as right. far as like you know ppe and you know health and safety how many employees do you currently have? I currently have four employees. Ah, you're so. right on the cusp of getting number five. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you you were talking about in the last segment that you were trying to diversify your portfolio so that you could keep these seasonal employees and keep them around long term. Yeah. When you go through and you do your trading, yes, you have trained the employee on how to drive a, a, a clutch. <laughs> <laughs> if they need to, um, but and you've gone through and you've, you've they've been trained on you know the different chemicals and that sort of thing, but from a personal standpoint, what's some of the things that you find yourself needing to remember to not forget when you're training these employees? To not forget, I mean, basically just uh, you know that they are people. Yeah, you know? okay. I mean, right. accidents are going to happen. Right. You know, we have to. You know, I have to understand that, and you know, equipment breaks. You know, I have to let them know that it's not their fault sometimes if something like breaks. a tree slams into the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Shatters a glass and scares the poor guy half to death. Cause right. It sounds like a gunshot going off in the cab. <laughs> you know. Sure, sure. But and you've gone through and you you've you've trained the employee on on how to do their job well. 
What are you doing to keep them around? Well, basically what I try to do is I just try to keep them working. Okay. So I, you know, want to, I want them to be working full time. They want to be working full time. Right. Uh, sometimes there's overtime too, which they're, you know, I, they're think, happy to get I it. think they're happy to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I know their pocketbook is happy to get it. But, right. You right. know, it is a lot of extra time and hopefully they're not too, you know, upset about it. Right. But, uh, but that's the big thing is I just wanted to just try to provide a, an environment that they want to look forward to coming to work. I mean, I've, it's like little simple stuff. Like I've added a little coffee maker and a refrigerator in the break room. Right. And, you know, and just simple stuff like that. Just try to, I mean, because it's a, it's a manual labor job, right. you know, at the end of the day. And, you know, it is, it can be very hard work sometimes in the sun and right. uncomfortable. And you know, I want them to, you know, come back on that Monday. You right. Know? You've been in business for six years now? Yeah. Okay. And, you, well, first of all, why did you get into this business? Why not the family business? So I was working for the family business at the time. Right. And, you know, we had hired out, you know, our spring, basically. Right, right. So we hired a contractor. And I thought to myself one day, I'm like, you know, I attended a, uh, you know, a workshop, you know, about, you know, family farm business. And, right. you know, one of the things they talked about was, you know, equipment. Right. I was like, I can do that. Right. I like tractors. <laughs> right, sure, right, right. So I, I thought, you know, I approached my dad. I'm like, hey, how about I, uh, you know, I'll buy a sprayer and, you know, the farm can pay me to do the spraying. Sure. So, and, yeah, that's kind of how it started. And, you know, then I got my commercial license, went and talked to, you know, a couple neighbors and said, hey, I'm doing this now. Do you mind if I would spray? And they were like, we'll see how this works out. You right, know? right, so right, right, right. Took well, a few years for some of them to come around, but, you know. Right. When you left the family business and went out on your own, there's one thing about being in the family business and essentially being an employee of the family business. It's a little different when you're the owner. Yeah. And what's one of the things that you've noticed that you're still working on and overcoming as the, doing the business for the last six years? It's, I, I have a very tight grip on almost everything that I do. Right. At least I try to. Right. Um, I'm working on relaxing that grip and uh, you know trusting my employees sure. to do the work and to do it right, uh -huh. and to where I don't have to, you know, hover basically be a helicopter boss. <laughs> sure, so, right, right, right. So that's definitely my my biggest struggle is you know to try to, you know, let loose and let the guys do their work. How are you recognizing that you're being a helicopter boss? <laughs> uh, it, it's it's more stressful, that's for sure. Mm. You know, to try to be over the top of everything and right. like you know, make sure like the little details are done. And right. that's, you know, I just have to realize that everyone's gonna do stuff a little differently, not necessarily the way I want it to be done, right. but it's still gonna get done, it's gonna get done right, right. you know? And I need to just relax. <laughs> relax <laughs> and find those teachable moments. Exactly. When we come back, we're gonna talk more about how do you keep from getting overextended and when is it an appropriate time to take out a loan? When we come right back. The reason I'm here with Nick Paula, the owner of Technical Spray Services, is because of a Visioneer question that came from a Visioneer just like you. They wanted to find out at what point is do you spend on cash or which is credit? Where is that line? And what do you do to keep from getting overextended? So if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and let us know. Who knows, your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration. So reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Nick Paula, the owner of Technical Spray Services, and our vision your question comes from Adriana who asks, how do you balance buying what you need with cash with what you need to get a loan from a bank, all without getting over leveraged and overextended? So uh, basically some of my big ticket items, you know, I've had to take a loan out for, you know, I'll take out like a, you know, a small loan for the tractor right. or the sprayer. Okay. And it's basically a loan that's tied to the, you know, the equipment is the collateral for right. it. Okay, right. So just like you would like a car, basically, an auto loan, basically. Right. Uh, and the, the way I looked at it is like, okay, if I'm going to take a loan out, I have a monthly payment or, you know, an annual payment. Sometimes I'll structure it to however, you know, the cash flow is. So right. like for the tractors, 
and the sprayers. Right. It's you know six months at a time. You know during the when the cash is coming in. Right. And basically, if if it's going to pay for itself, you know from the work that I'm you know doing with it. Right. I feel comfortable taking out the loan. And so. you also have smaller things that can be big things that you pay cash for. How do you mm -hmm. discern what that is? Well, like for instance, for you know some of the the herbicide sprays I do uh -huh. on the industrial, I have to front the bill right. to buy the chemicals before I apply them. Right. And I'm usually on like a 30 or 45 day payment. Right. Right. So I try to work it out to where you know from the warehouse that I buy the chemical from, can I get an account, you know, a cash account basically that to uh -huh. where I can wait, you know. 30 days before I have to pay that, and, right. you know, hopefully I'll get some cash flow coming in right. and I can pay them and, you know, it just keeps kind of right. leapfrogging over everything, sure. you know, so. At what point do you have to sit back and say, no, because if I buy this or if I pay for that or I accrue this, I'm going to be upside down. Where is that line and, and how do you know that? Well, the line for me was, you know, stay away from the, the nice, brand new, shiny thing, uh, you know. Oh, sure, right. So, I mean, that's that's the tough one, I mean, because, you know, everyone wants, like, an, a brand new truck, or yeah. everyone wants a brand new tractor, you right. know. Well, did you so. know Lamborghini makes tractors? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> could, could you imagine? I mean, I guess they're great tractors, but that's not necessarily something that you'd want for your, for your business. No, yeah, probably not. No. <laughs> What are the things that are tempting to you that you'd like to, you, you resist that temptation to buy, even though you could kind of sort of in the back of your mind justify it and say, oh yeah, this will work great for my business, but at the same time, the other side of you is going, yeah, no. I mean, it's definitely, you know, newer equipment, mm -hmm. you know, because newer equipment usually doesn't break as much, right. you know, it's it's nicer to look at, you know, the the urge to just, you know, go and buy a brand new truck, you right. know, instead of, you know, just roll around my, the one I have that has 150,000 miles right now. Right, you know? right. So those are like the urges, like, it's always in the back of my mind, you know, especially around tax time. It's like, you know, maybe I could, you know, <laughs> I'll say this is a write-off, you know. <laughs> well, and, and speaking of vehicles and trucks and whatnot, you enjoy, you've got a Mustang. Yes, I do. And uh, you're kind of a car guy. Yes, I am. And, and why? Why do you? What do you enjoy about cars? I I like going fast. Oh, ah, right, right, sure, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, from a young age, I mean, my dad was into cars, and you know, it just kind of, I was introduced at a very young age to you know what a quick car feels like, and right. I was like, I like that. And sure. I, right. I want to drive that. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I, I might splurge a little bit to buy something. Right, sure, yeah. sure. I've had a really good season. I think I, I need a new overhead cam. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's a, that's a tough sell sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And you also play the drums? Yes, I do. And, and what, what got you into being a drummer? Or are you a drummer or a concussionist or a percussionist? Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not a concussionist. I know that. <laughs> so. But no, I, I picked up the drums, you know, I, I played music when I was younger, you know, I played the trumpet, and then, you know, the drums look kind of cool, and, right. you know, my dad had a drum set, so right. I'm like, okay, I'll start playing, and, right. you know, I started playing, picked it up, and I had a uh, friend from church that said, hey, we have a worship band, would you like to come play drums? I right. said, sure, sure, I'll come play right. at the church, and, you know, I've been doing that for quite a few years now, and I really enjoy it. What have you learned from playing drums that you've applied to your business you got to stay in a rhythm you know you yeah. can't you know get out of sync mm -hmm. you know you have to balance you know home and work that right. you can and okay. yeah because i mean you know the drums are you know it's the rhythm section you know it's the the basis of the band you know right. i mean everything else is just a sideshow act you know? so. <laughs> make sure you tell that to the lead singer right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he's gonna love that so. <laughs> sure sure what makes you wake up every morning and open your business? Well, I mean, it's definitely my family. Uh -huh. So, you know, the the strive and the urge to provide for my wife and kids, right. you know, my employees' families, and just knowing that, you know, my employees are counting on me to open the business, open the doors, you know, keep them employed, keep the work coming. Right. And it's also, you know, just knowing that, you know, this what we do is benefiting you know, the oil field industry, you know, the solar industry, the agriculture, 
I mean, it's, I don't take lightly what we have to do, especially when we're spraying food right. that people are gonna be eating. You know, we have to make sure that everything's done correctly, the right way. We're not over applying, we're not under applying. Right. We're attacking the pests that have to be treated, you know, for the food to be prepared, you know, properly. If visioneers want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? So if you want to get in, uh, in contact with me, I mean, you can call me. That's the easiest way. Uh, my phone number is 661-747-6180. Uh, we do have a website, too. It is uh, tssweedcontrol.com. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram. You, know, you can look it up, uh, technical, technical Spray Services. So. And I'll be right back with my final thought. The winter season is rapidly approaching, but are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? Bakersfield's best tire store, Clarou Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Clarou Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Clarou Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at ClarouTire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. Call Clarou Tire at 661-324-6069 today. Battling Shiny Object Syndrome. I don't know about you, but the end of the calendar year is rapidly approaching, and I've already been talking with my CPA and tax attorney about some of the successes that we've had this year on Small Business Celebration and investing them into next year, whether it's a new cameras, new lights, new microphone, more crew, more marketing, all in order to improve and grow Small Business Celebration for next year. And as I was talking with my CPA, he's incredibly patient and he's a really good listener. And I was going on and telling about all the great things that we're doing and I kept talking about this new computer that I want to get. It's got like, it's like 10 gigs of hard drive and 128 megabytes or gigabytes of RAM. And it's got, it's, it's got an 8K monitor and it's so cool. It's like this thing is great. To which he very politely looked at me and asked, Michael, how is this shiny object going to get you where your business needs to go next year? I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Nick Paula, the owner of Technical Spray Services, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business, and we'll see you here again next week. So, by the way, why can't you tell a secret on a farm? Because <laughs> everyone's going to know about it. Close, close, <laughs> close, close. The because corn has ears. Corn has ears and the potatoes. Have eyes. Has eyes. Yeah. Bump. You've heard this before. I've heard it, yeah. <laughs> See, my, my wife, her grandfather's a, you know, a hog farmer back in the Midwest. So, right. yeah, they grew corn. So, yeah, there's corn jokes. There's yeah. corn jokes. They're corny, 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 yep. corny. Welcome to Small Business.